Now here's what one of our viewers wrote in. She says, I don't want to turn my decisions about investing over to a broker, but I don't have time to learn everything I need to know to do it all myself. What's the best way to go? Now this email comes from Stacy. Stacy's in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Stacy, Pam happens to have a background as a financial advisor, and she's more than qualified to answer that question. Yep, that's what I used to do. So financial advisors, brokers, money managers, they come in different packages, and they provide different services, you know, depending upon your situation. But the idea is you're going to either pay somebody else to help you with your most serious investment decisions side by side, or you're going to completely turn those decisions over to that person and then pay him or her to invest for you. You know, that's a distinction that I've paid a lot more attention to since we started doing the show, whether Good. I should join in or let them do it all by well, themselves. After everything that's gone down on Wall Street, I think that we've learned one thing. Nobody really has the holy grail when it comes to investing. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? This market is as volatile as you'll ever see. The wild swings we're seeing are likely to continue. We haven't seen anything like this probably since the Great Depression, I think it's fair to say. It was a Wall Street earthquake that devoured the financial giants, some more than a century old. AIG, Bear Stearns, Freddie Mac, Lehman Brothers, all gone. Merged or bailed out by their rich Uncle Sam. Well, that's you and me, our tax money, because of all the bad bets they made. The only two left standing, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. And despite all the biggest banks disappearing, Wall Street expert Dave Kansas thinks they won't be gone for long. So instead of the big investment banks that we've seen, we're going to see a couple of big ones that still remain, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, UBS, and we're going to see a lot of little ones trying to fill the shoes uh, that have been left behind by Lehman, Bear Stearns, and others. Dave's a Wall Street Journal reporter who wrote the guide to the end of Wall Street, how and what to do next with your investments after the crash. A lot of people got caught in the downturn, uh, overexposed to stocks, especially older people, and they should not have been. So there's been a, a return to fundamentals. A good diversif diversified plan is really important in sticking with that plan. So I think that people now understand that financial advisors can be helpful as a tool, but the vast majority of them did not see a crisis coming. It was stock market losses on paper. It was 401k statements mm -hmm. that people dreaded looking at. That was the wake up call. So I think that people are getting it, that there's a role for an advisor in your life, but that role has to be more of a teacher and less of a guru. That's a great way of putting it, guru. You should be very skeptical if they ask you to sit in front of them while they wear flowing robes and burn incense, right? <laughs> exactly. And here's something that I know is very important to you because you brought it up before, paying attention to how much you are paying that advisor. That's a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, don't even get me started on that one. Stacy. once you come to realize that it is your life savings that you're playing around with, you're going to really want to start to dig deep. And, you know, fees for this kind of advice should never really exceed more than two, two and a half, maybe three percent of the total value of your portfolio. And when I say portfolio, what I mean is everything that you have that you could invest, your savings, your 401ks, your spouse's IRA accounts, everything collectively. And by all means, another tip, find an advisor who's fee only, not somebody who's driven by commissions, because commission salespeople make their money selling transactions, and that's not in your best interest. So just remember those two things, mm -hmm. fees under 3% and fee only for advice. Great advice from a former stockbroker.